until they need to stay in the <laughs> triangle. Um, so hello everybody, uh, my name is Alexandra um, and I will talk today about Simprint. So I will start briefly with who we are, um, what we do, what we're trying to solve, um, what we've built, um, who's helping us and what we're planning to do in the future. Um, do, we don't have a remote, right? Um, so just quickly, um, Simprint is a social enterprise. So it's a social tech, uh, tech uh, startup uh, that started uh, with four uh, young students. So three of us are still PhD students in the University of Cambridge. Um, and one, uh, our software developer, just finished his master's and we managed to convince him not to take any job offer that he's getting every week <laughs> um, and work with us um, on this um, great project. So. Uh, uh, what we all have in common is that we want to build technology for develop for development. So um, we want um, to basically build tools that will allow that will allow uh, poor people to improve their lives. Um, so our uh, mission is to build incredible technology uh, for development, and um, our main value is impact over profit. So we are not a charity; we are a social enterprise, uh, but uh, we have an asset lock, and um, our main priority is to deliver affordable goods to the ones who need them the most. Um, so how this all started? About two years ago, uh, the humanitarian center uh, in Cambridge and Arm organized the hackathon. And uh, in that particular year, it was global health, the theme. In this hackathon, different organizations come and propose, tell what problems they have, and then groups, teams of students gather together and try to come up with solutions. So that particular year, uh, two years ago, uh, there was an NGO called Medic Mobile that um, acts in uh, Africa. Um, and they said that they have all these cool M Health tools, so uh, mobile health. Um, applications in order um, that w that enable community health workers to go from village to village uh, to monitor patients in uh, areas where they will not have uh, access to a medical doctor um, or M diagnostics. Basically, everything um, that uses a mobile phone that is now quite taking like a huge expansion with throughout the developing world. Um, so themselves and other organizations had these tools, but they couldn't really use them because they. Um, they could not identify the people that they were trying to help. So people in the developing world, they don't have IDs. Uh, most of the time, they don't know their exact date of birth. So you cannot use you know, any other identifiers that you would use here, for example, to identify yourself, like your address or your name or your date of birth. Um, so at that uh, particular uh, point, the team came up um, with an idea. So why not use fingerprints? So. Um, a comparison between paper IDs and fingerprint IDs, of course, like the paper ones can be lost or damaged, and even in here, like people use their NHS cards or their numbers, and um, especially in those environments, this is much more prevalent. So, but fingerprints, you carry them all the time with you, um, if you're lucky enough to have them all. Um, they are unique, and they're also relatively difficult to fake. So they have been already used in India, for example, for their voting program. Um, so. Initially, we wanted to just buy a fingerprint scanner from the market, connect it to a mobile phone, and do the software bit um, for it. And that was it. That was the idea. But then uh, we started looking on the market, started talking to different people, and we soon realized that there is no fingerprint scanner out there uh, that would be suitable for developing world applications. So um, some of them uh, are inaccurate, the cheaper ones, and the more uh, expensive ones are too expensive to be able um, to be feasible to be implemented in those conditions. Um, all of them connect um, via USB to laptops, so there are only a few out there that connect to mobile phones via uh, wireless or Bluetooth, and they are generally like $500 and up. Um, they have a bad design and a form factor, so they are not made for one-to-end identification. So it's not made for me to go and identify a person, but they're made for me to identify myself if I want to access my laptop or my phone or whatever service. So they're not designed for that particular application. They cannot be easily uh, held um, in the hand uh, while walking, walking around um, in the field. Uh, they're also not rugged, they're not waterproof, or they cannot uh, function at 40 degrees and high humidity, as conditions in Bangladesh, for example. 
Uh, plus, uh, the companies who make them, uh, they have a very, very weird uh, licensing um, option in which they charge basically per swipe of the fingers or per, per patient scan they would charge two cents or something. Of course, this model is not sustainable for an NGO in the developing world. And they're also very difficult to integrate. So I also bought a couple of them. We tried to plug them in. It's a pain. They have proprietary templates, proprietary matching algorithms. It's really, really difficult to integrate them in an mHealth app. Uh, most of these mHealth tools are open source, so like ODK or M OpenMRS <coughs> for data collection um, are open source. So therefore, you know, having something that you can plug in that is also open source um, would be ideal. Um, so that was our idea, to make a fingerprint scanner. Um, at that point, when I joined about um, a year ago, um, I didn't know how naive I was thinking that's going to be easy to make a fingerprint scanner. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that was the idea, make it low cost, between 30 and $50, dollars. Um, integrate it into home health projects, wireless, ruggedized, uh, waterproof, and has a, li a lo lifelong uh, battery that um, doesn't in this way, it doesn't suck up the battery of the phone, which in case of smartphones is a big problem. Um, in terms of software, uh, we wanted to use an open source matching algorithm, um, an open source API, and make it interoper interoperable with other scanners. So we wanted to use standardized templates uh, that any other organization out there can use either our hardware um, scanner or any other scanner on, on the market. And then, of course, make plugin for already existing tools like ODK that people can simply download and plug in in their applications very easily. Um, so this is an overview. I don't know if you see it's a bit small um, of how this whole thing works at the moment. So these are our first prototypes. I'm gonna pass them by. So um, this is kind of a schematic. What is inside? Um, so we have a swipe scanner. Now we're in the process of changing it with a touch scanner. We use this one uh, because it was easier to integrate and also quite cheap. Um, then uh, we have a Bluetooth module, um, our microcontroller, um, Nokia battery. Here we have a LiPo, but it's going to be a Nokia battery that is rechargeable with common Nokia chargers that are everywhere in the developing world. Um, and then a ruggedized waterproof casing. This is not a ruggedized waterproof casing yet because it's done in my space on the CNC mini machine, but soon <laughs> we're going to have. Um, oh, and here you can see um, the <coughs> process uh, workflow basically. So. We're taking a fingerprint. On the microcontroller, we extract a template, which is a basically a string that is between 200 and 400 bytes uh, that contains all the minutiae, all the unique identifying points on the fingerprint. This one is passed via Bluetooth uh, to the phone. And here you have two options. If you have internet connection, it's, it's going to be uh, sent straight to our server where the matching is going to happen. And then a unique ID is going to be passed by, back to the phone um, or passed back to the database where the medical records are held. And um, then you get on the phone just the name of the person and the, and the medical history. Um, I can do, I will do a demo later and this will be more clear. Or if you don't have internet connection, we also ported um, the source APIs, which is the open source uh, matching algorithms to Android. So you can pre-download the database of the patients from the village that you know you're gonna go in that day and then do the matching locally on the phone. Um, that's for places where they have poor internet connections, like most of the developing countries. Um, even though in Bangladesh, for example, uh, we went, we did, the, we did the testing there, and they have really, really good internet connection. Like even in like very remote villages, they have like 3G. Um, so that was that was quite good. But that's and in Africa and Kenya, you might have good internet connections, but in other countries, it's quite tricky. Um, so, of course, I wasn't able to do this whole thing myself, so we, um, I will come back later to who helped us develop um, this. Um, just a quick mention, we use like Embed, this was our first, um, you can see here, our first prototype, which was a breadboard with an Embed and a sensor um, that we just took to Bangladesh and uh, tested this little chip here, the fingerprint scanner. And then we use, of course, our safety, which is an open source matching algorithm, uh, which we improved, and of course, the incredible um, MakeSpace community. Um, so before I go back to, to MakeSpace and how we were able to do this, just to mention quickly about um, how we went around designing this. And um, 
so we went and field tested our scanners after we've done the prototypes in Bangladesh. And before going there, we thought, okay, we need to, call to test if it works, but also we want to collect data um, about the design. So what do we need to take into account when designing a fingerprint scanner specifically for the developing world market and even more specifically for community health workers, so for health application. This was our first um, applications that we came up before we went there with a couple of designs. For example, we need to, um, we uh, know that we need to protect the scanner, um, not to get scratched. So we're thinking of um, doing a kind of like some cover sleeves that we drag. Uh, one idea was to have a casing where you have both your phone and your um, scanner. Then we also came up with some handheld devices so that community health workers can go and take a fingerprint rather than you having to give a fingerprint. So this will um, save quite a lot of time. So we went with a couple of molds made on the 3D printer and on the CNC um, here and um, um, tested. So um, this is our um, field testing in Bangladesh. We were in May um, this year. We collected about a thousand fingerprints um, not from a thousand people though, but because we collected all ten twice, so we had about eighty people um, that we managed um, to get. Um, we conducted focus group discussions, so these were our molds, so these are the ones that you can hold in hand, and then we did ranking exercises with community health workers to say what they prefer, um, and um, there were some interesting, really interesting results and things that we didn't think about before we went there. So for example, when we asked about the color, um, when we talked, so we did, we talked with community health workers, so the end users, and then we also talked to managers, so in the NGO, this big NGO, so we talked to BRAC, which is the largest development NGO in the world, and the people in the offices said that no, you cannot use uh, black because uh, they will feel it's a weapon, especially on the, on the ones that you are holding, so they look, um, they look like this, um, I have them there, I don't know, I, I forgot to bring them. Um, and then, but when we talked to the community health workers, they said that no, we want them black because if they're colorful, our kids are gonna think they're toys and they're gonna take them. Um, also, the managers told us we wanna make, uh, make it look like a mobile phone. That's why we came up with this design because we knew this from, from um, before we went there, uh, that people like mobile phone looking stuff. But then the community health workers said, uh, which were women, said if it looks like a mobile phone that our husbands and brothers are gonna think it's a mobile phone and they're gonna take it. So don't make it look like a mobile phone. So that's why we, <laughs> <laughs> we came up with the, the design that was there more like a mouse shape because it looks like a device. So they want it professional. Um, they want it to not to look cheap. So that was very important because if it looks cheap, then they will not take care of it properly. Um, and they would kind of devalue how it looks. So a lot of interesting insights. They all prefer the handheld one. They said that they want to minimize the amount of explanation that they have to like give um, to, the, to the patients, you know, how to swipe or how to touch. They want to do them themselves. So something that you can hold in your hand will be quite beneficial. So these are kind of like the user design um, feedback that we received. Um, and then we talked uh, while we were there, we talked to within different programs. So like this is in a microfinance um, setting. Um, so in, um, in some communities, microfinance works great because everybody knows each other. But in places in slums or in places where people move a lot, uh, there's a lot of fraud. So there are different financial officers that have microloans, that give microloans, but then a person can fake its ID and then can take microloans from different organizations. And this is a big problem. Um, so people really, really want to implement biometrics in this project. And then other applications would be in a refugee camps or like anti-corruption um, efforts or in research. So in longitudinal research, for example, when um, universities or research institutes, they want to make a study uh, for like five or 10 years, um, many times, you know, they have the problem that they cannot track the same person because they cannot identify. So researchers are really, really interested in this. Um, so now about who's helping us. So I asked my colleagues in my team, to write the list of the pre mexpec skills I had, and this is what they came <laughs> up with. <laughs> and um, I, I don't do jujitsu. I don't know why they wrote that. <laughs> um, and these are the post mexpec skills. So I learned a lot in one year. Um, actually, we managed to do this in about six months. 
Um, I joined MySpace exactly one year ago, so in October uh, last year. Um, I was just simply Googling um, how to make a PCB because I didn't even know. And there was a meetup, the PCB makers meetup in MySpace. So I came up, I showed up to this meetup, and then I found out about the whole MySpace thing. So I became a member. Um, so my background is not in engineering. So my PhD is in healthcare biotechnology and nanotechnology. So I'm, I'm doing science. I'm a chemist in material science. Uh, so I work with tiny, tiny things. And for the last 10 years, I've been working only with tiny things, nothing that you can actually hold in your hand. So uh, it was a big change. Um, and I learned everything from cell phone mount soldering. Uh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> um, from uh, circuits. Uh, from simple things, I didn't know anything about electronics. And then body code, um, milling, um, laser cutter, and everything that's that's been like in here. So um, my next slide is to do a big thank you for everybody, like for the amazing community. I think we had more than 10 or 12 people involved. Um, I was living in MySpace for a long time, actually. So <laughs> at one point, like everybody in MySpace was involved um, and helping me with bits and pieces. Um, so um, that was like really, really crucial for us. And now, so after all this this work, uh, last no two months ago now. So at the end in uh, in August, uh, we participated to a competition, so a grant competition in Washington D.C. Um, a grant that was uh, sponsored by uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and uh, UK Ed, Grand Challenges Canada. It's called, it's part of the Grand Challenges and it was called Saving Lives at Birth. Um, so we got shortlisted, uh, we went there, uh, we presented a case for maternal health. So how can Simprints uh, improve the prenatal, the antenatal visits? Um, so right now, every mother needs to have four antenatal visits before she gives birth, but about 49% of the cases this doesn't happen, like she doesn't receive all four visits. Um, and this is mainly because the community health workers either say that they visited the mother and they didn't, or they don't know who they visited and who didn't, so they, they cannot really track. So in this way, by, by using fingerprint scanners with a mobile phone, uh, you can also ensure that the community health worker actually goes to the mother. So it's not only for identification, but also for monitoring community health workers. Um, so we were really happy and ARM, um, like before we went there, ARM promised that they will match um, a part of the grant that we will get and this like helped us a lot in there because there were like um, 60 uh, competitors. <coughs> Um, and we managed to get the grant and the our money. Uh, so now from January next year, uh, we finally um, have some money to move, like to actually do something properly, not like building bits and pieces, which is good, but uh, <laughs> it would be good for a change. And also uh, we are going, uh, right now we were just doing it as our side project. So in the evenings, because we all had PhD. And uh, so from January, I'm gonna intermit my PhD for a year and go full-time. It's intermeeting, I'm not quitting. Um, so um, yeah, just an overview. We got a lot of media coverage in the last uh, months, actually two months. Um, these are also some student competition that we participated and enabled us to survive for a year. So we got like 1K, 5K student competitions. We also got a small TSB grant. Um, initially, this is how we, we all started. Uh, and yeah, so now just five minutes, because I think I'm approaching my limit, um, is uh, what we want to do from now. So we don't want to do only biometrics and fingerprint scanners. So our dream is to go into different types of sensors. So right now we do have a sensor, we have a Bluetooth module, a phone, and a server. So we have all the infrastructure in place. We can easily put other types of sensors and collect other types of data um, and do Internet of Things. Um, so when we went in BRAC, actually their tech team uh, there was very excited uh, about other types of sensors. So we asked, so what can we do? And they all said, uh, you know, sensors for agriculture. We need temp temperature, humidity, all these type of simple type of sensor um, to do. They wanted also something. Um, they had an example of. Um, um, they had a program, a sanitation program, where they wanted to monitor how many times people are washing their hands. And they wanted to see if all their campaigns and their posters and <coughs> educational programs are effective or not. And they wanted a sensor that will basically detect when somebody picks up a soap. 
so that they could monitor how it was currently done. Somebody was going after every person went to the toilet and checked if there was water spilled on the bathroom. So not very effective. So they were telling us, oh, can you make a sensor? I'm like, technically, it's not going to be difficult to do like a pressure sensor. But of course, implementing the whole thing, it's it's not easy, but it's not difficult as well. So the market is there, um, and this is what we're hoping to, to go into. Um, and of course, like long term, uh, we want to do hardware for development. So I'm working on my PhD on diagnostics, and this is what I would like to do, like working on medical devices and diagnostics, all connected to mobile phones, and of course, like education, anything that technology, um, the design of technology speci specifically for um, development. Before I do a demo, I also have to do a demo. Um, so we are looking for people all the time, like, um, and especially technical people. Right now we are working on making our own template extraction algorithms from a fingerprint image, basically extracting the minutia. Uh, right now we are using um, the manufacturer's um, SDK, basically where they have this extraction uh, process, um, but we want to be independent of that. So we want to be able to use whatever sensor we want and to have our own extraction algorithms. And I actually had a talk last week with the CEO from the largest biometric distributors in the UK, in the US, um, and they told us if we do that and we make it open source, because this is what we want to do, he said, like, you're going to put so many companies out of business. <laughs> we want to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested, we're looking for people who want to help with um, image processing, basically. It's just, um, and then data transmission, so we're now looking in audio data transmission, not to use the Bluetooth um, module um, because it's quite expensive, so decreasing the cost um, by audio jack would be even better. Um, also, we are doing a development platform right now where we connect, we want to connect five different sensors. Um, to one board, maybe, I don't know, a Raspberry Pi or a big or black or something, uh, to be able to assess which one is best. Because now we, we selected this one, but we want to move away from it, and we pre-selected five sensors on the market, and we want to see which one is best. And then our software developer is not here, but he always needs help, because he's one person running the whole server, the Android app, um, everything. So um, if you're interested, let me know. So... Thank you very much, and I will do a demo. Okay. Uh. So, um, that's our demo app. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm still in the way. Um, so, this is turned on. Connected. This is 88. Connected, um, then um, scan finger. Um, let's get R2. Okay, good image. If anybody wants to try afterwards, feel free. I'm going to leave it here. Oh no, <laughs> I just turned it off. It's always when you want to do live demos. No, it's okay. <laughs> So this is my unique ID, and now if I want to um, identify myself, I scan my finger again, one, two, good image, identify, yeah, so it's the same, the same. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can enroll yourself if you want. I'm not going to steal your fingerprints. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and just a quick, so this is how our server um, 
the back end um, looks. Let me just so steamfansimprints.com. Um, so this is um, what our uh, software developer made for me. So these are uh, patient four. So this is what I just enrolled now, and these are the tests that I've done before them. Uh, so I can see all the patients, um, and then in the admin panel, um, so Tristram is our software developer, which calls himself God. <laughs> uh, and uh, here are, I mean, I don't have access to all our other, he didn't let me mess up, because now we have uh, two, comp uh, one a social enterprise and two um, NGOs um, rolling and testing on our server, so enrolling patients, so he didn't want to give me access to those because he doesn't <laughs> trust me. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Thank you.